Reading Rhinos presents The Sniffles for Bear by Bonnie Becker, illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton. One morning, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. Cubid, he rasped. Mouse, small and gray and bright eyed, bustled into Bear's living room. Bear huddled in his chair, big and brown and sniffy snouted. He had a terrible cold. I am come, declared Mouse. Soon you'll be good as new. Bear frowned. Mouse was much too cheerful. I am quite ill, Bear reminded him. Indeed, said Mouse. I have just the thing. Mouse riffled through his bag, then settled next to Bear with a yellow book in his paw. It was spring, Mouse read. The sky was blue, the sun was happy, all the birds were singing. Stop, growled Bear. I fear you do not appreciate the gravity of my situation. Mouse looked sad, but his tail didn't. In fact, I may not be long for this world, Bear huffed. Oh my, Mouse said. Yes, Bear murmured, coughing pitifully. I grow weaker by the moment. Ah, I have just the thing, Mouse announced. I shall soothe you with the song. Oh, she'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming disgraceful, barked Bear. Don't you like singing, asked Mouse. When somebody is dreadfully ill, you sing mournful songs. Everyone knows that, growled Bear. He blew his nose with a honk. I have just the thing, Mouse said. He rifled through his bag. Plunk, plink, plunkety. Twing, twing, plonk. Mouse strummed heartfully on a tiny banjo. That isn't boardful at all, cried Bear. It gets sadder, Mouse promised. Twing, twang, plunk. This is impossible, intolerable, Bear started to roar, but he was too weak. Look, Bear wheezed, look at how my paw is trembling. You must help me get to my bed. And indeed, Mouse was most helpful. He tucked Bear in, then whisked out the bedroom door. He returned balancing a big bowl of soup on his head. Nettle soup, Mouse said. I made it myself. Bear sipped cautiously. It was hot and tasted a bit like spinach and straw. Bear rather liked it. Bear's eyes began to close. Better? inquired Mouse. Bear's eyes snapped open. Certainly not. I think I should make a will. Ah, I have just the thing, said Mouse, fetching a pencil and a little notebook from his bag. He perched next to Bear, his pencil poised to write. Bear gazed thoughtfully at the ceiling. I, Bear, he said, leave my red roller skates too. Bear paused. Mouse leaned forward eagerly. To Bouse, announced Bear. Hooray, said Mouse. Bear frowned. You needn't be so happy about it. I also leave my bop to Mouse, he added quickly. Mouse didn't look as interested in that. And my wash bucket, added Bear. At last, Mouse seemed to understand the gravity of the situation. Anything else? asked Mouse. I am too weak to go on, said Bear. Perhaps I could just add your tea kettle? said Mouse helpfully. Have you no decency? bellowed Bear, sitting bolt upright in bed. Your strength has returned, Mouse exclaimed. No, it hasn't, said Bear, falling back. That was just the last flicker before the dark. I see. Mouse folded his paws and looked very sad, even his tail. Bear's voice dropped to a whisper. Farewell, Bells. 
Goodbye, bear, murmured Mouse. Bear closed his eyes. He lay very still. He began to snore. After a long while, Bear opened his eyes. He saw Mouse. I feel better, Bear said. Mouse nodded, but he didn't look so good. His eyes were watery, and he made sniffling sounds. Perhaps you better lie down, said Bear, getting out of bed. Mouse didn't argue. Do you want to make a will? Bear asked. Mouse shook his head. Bear carefully tucked him in. I'm sorry you're sick, said Bear. Thank you, Bear, Mouse sniffled, and after a moment he added, That was just the ting. Bear smiled. Mouse closed his eyes and was soon snug asleep. <laughs>